Today we're back with Dr. Benjamin Noonan. We want to encourage you on studying the biblical languages, and especially Hebrew. All right, with that background of uh, Semitics and the, the culture that's, that's going on with biblical Hebrew, there's such a distance between that and now. And, and so many people are intimidated and study the biblical languages, but especially in biblical Hebrew. I've seen some statistics you know, about you know, people taking courses, mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. attrition after they've taken the courses. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. you know, maybe 99% tend to lose their Hebrew, uh, at least of pastors, compared to 90%, uh, which is still pretty bad for Greek. Yeah, um, but still 10 and one, 10% of 1%, you know, what, what do you think about Hebrew pedagogy and, um, you know, are there some considerations that, that you have for that? Because obviously you want to see people love and, and learn Hebrew. Right, right. Yeah, and I see that same struggle in a lot of my students. I mean, even, even starting off, and this is a way in which Hebrew and Greek are, are different, I suppose, because the Hebrew alphabet looks very different. Uh, Greek, at least a lot of the letters uh, look look familiar to, to many students, but even start right, uh, starting right away, uh, students often struggle with the alphabet. So I see the struggle because, because Hebrew is just very different, um, and languages are challenging to learn. Uh, most of us, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And so I want to do what I can to help my students learn the best that they can. And part of that entails using more communicative approaches. That's not the way that I learned Hebrew or Greek myself. Uh, I learned the traditional grammar translation method. And there's still a lot that's good in those methods. I mean, paradigms have their place. I'm not trying to say we need to jettison that at all. But when we take a look at second language acquisition research and we think about how do people learn languages, the way that they learn them is, again, using more of this communicative approach uh, my eyes have been opened to this a lot by my uh, wife, Dr. Jennifer Noonan. Uh, really thankful for her, and she's been a you know good uh, partner to have yes. on this journey, <laughs> journey of learning myself. Um, but yeah, try to do what I can, and I take small steps. I can't do it all again because this is not the way I was trained. I'm not as comfortable. I need to build up my confidence and my own comfortability there. Uh, one example of something I did recently. Uh, Jen and I actually worked on together were sh some short stories uh, in simplified Hebrew, just giving our students a chance to get more practice with reading and to get some uh, input where they're, they're uh, having a chance to, to read Hebrew and uh, again, uh, what second language acquisition researchers call input, where it's, uh, it's helping to, to reinforce their understanding of the language is just so key. And it's been great to see the results with my students too. That's neat. How many how many years have you been teaching Hebrew then? So you've been here ten years. Yeah, I've been here about ten years. Uh, I've I did probably about eight years or so. I was doing first year Hebrew when I first came here. Uh, I have a new colleague here uh, for the past two years, Dr. Michael Lyons. Really grateful yes. for him. And uh, since he came, I switched to doing second year Hebrew, which is a little bit of a a different a different animal, right? Uh, a little bit different when it comes to teaching. But you can still incorporate a lot of those same principles, trying to get your students into the text as much as possible and giving them, giving them opportunities to practice reading rather than just expecting them to memorize something and to be able to, to read it because they have learned a paradigm. Right. So they, they get to see some of the payoff kind of early. Some of us mm -hmm. have been in programs at times where... It was almost like the text was withheld from us mm -hmm. until we, you know, went through the boot camp of <laughs> the, the paradigm memorization and everything else and just kind of like showed that we were worthy. <laughs> <or something. laughs> right, right. Yeah, and it was very discouraging at, yeah, at times. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You, you really need with language learning, because again, it's, it's tough. Yeah. It's hard. It takes work. And if you don't have that fun aspect to it, if you don't have... Uh, the, the payoff that you can see, you're not going to have the motivation to continue. And I think, you know, you mentioned stats at the beginning of, of, of how many people stop using the languages afterwards. I think a lot of it is because, uh, well, maybe, maybe they didn't quite get to the level where they felt comfortable with it, mm -hmm. uh, but they didn't see the motivation. They, they, they weren't able to work with it quite the way that they hoped to. And that just gets discouraging and prevents people from using it afterwards. Right. Well, I'm really glad that you are promoting their study and, uh, mm -hmm. and also looking at ways to improve uh, 
the connection with the students and yep. what they're going to retain. And, yep. and that CIU also prizes uh, including the biblical languages and keeping yes. it as a, a mainstay in yes. the curriculum. Yeah, I'm thankful for that. I know not every institution has the languages as part of their curriculum, but CIU does, and I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful for the opportunity, again, just even to do stuff like the Seder that we did yesterday, uh, some of these extracurricular things which even contribute to our learning of the languages. Right. They're important. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned your wife, Dr. Jennifer Noonan. Yes. Uh -huh. You all have collaborated with a journal article, too, I believe, haven't you, with Paul Overland uh, uh -huh, on, uh -huh. on the, the teaching of Hebrew? Uh-huh, uh -huh. Yeah. Yep, yeah, a little review of sorts of his, uh, he's got his own grammar out, which uh, has, a, has a lot of strengths and a lot of good things in it. Um, we reviewed it at a session at SBL, um, also part of the National Association of Professors of Hebrew, yes. one of their sessions a number of years ago. And so that's, that's been fun to work with Jen uh, on a number of projects. And we're always talking about ideas. Uh, you know, we've got really interesting dinner conversations. <laughs> and uh, But yeah, she's, she's helped me a lot just in terms of my thinking about how do we teach the biblical languages. Right. Well, I think it's really neat that you've got the, you know, the, the scholarly under the hood, the grammatical <laughs> loan words and this, these types of interests, but also the very practical. Mm -hmm. you know, how do we get first year students yep. to start acquiring the language? That's, yep. that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, when it comes to uh, just sort of go to tools uh, for you, whether as a scholar, teacher, things that maybe you recommend people, you know, you really need to have these kind of things mm -hmm. uh, in your toolbox or on, on your shelf. Would you like to share any, any ideas about those sorts of resources? Yeah, I suppose part of it depends on where your your viewers are at in their in their study of of Hebrew. For students who have made it through at least the the first year of Hebrew, one great book that I definitely recommend. This is my favorite of the uh, the grammars is a Biblical Hebrew Reference Grammar. This is just a great resource, uh, partially because it's it's written very well. It's pretty clear and concise. It doesn't have you know lengthy discussions, but it's it's very insightful, very accurate. And going back to talking about linguistics, it's uh, really informed by modern linguistics. So this is my favorite, my favorite grammar, kind of my go-to that I'll use. And speaking of linguistics, I also really like the Encyclopedia of uh, Hebrew Language and Linguistics that Brill published. Yes. Now it's kind of expensive. <laughs> yes. Uh, but it's a it's a, it's a good investment, and you can wait for it to be on sale. Yes. Uh, and then you can get it, and it's just got so many good articles in there. I, uh, I refer to that as well. I was really excited to see that Accordance Bible Software yes. uh, recently released. And the yep. sale, as of this recording, is not on. But watch, get on the newsletter, they come back That's right. around. That's right, at least once a year or so. And it's, it's a fabulous resource to have. I, I got it myself uh, recently as well. So I, I've been thankful for that. I think another great resource that your viewers should uh, should check out if they haven't already is um, actually two, but um, they're they're related, they're similar. So there's Olive with Beth and Alpha with Angela. They're two uh, freely available video courses, yeah. I suppose you could call them, uh, on Hebrew and on Greek, and they're for people of all different levels of language ability, uh, whether you're just starting out or maybe you're you know, you've, you've, you've known Hebrew or Greek for years. There's something you can learn there. I, I love their, their videos, which again are free, but they, they adopt more of this communicative approach. Really helps you to internalize things and to learn things in a way that you wouldn't otherwise. One of the really neat uh, perks of their approach, too, is it's all based in the target language yes. that you're seeking to learn. So yeah. If you, um, you may, maybe you're watching this and you're not a native English speaker, that doesn't matter for Olive with Beth or mm -hmm. Alpha with Angela. It's That's just right. going to lead you step by step uh, into Hebrew or, or Greek from the first episodes. So right. You're not having really cool. to translate it through another language, but you're, right. you're able to learn it and to internalize it directly from the, the, right. the source language there. It took me so long in my biblical language studies to start being able to think, and I still want to go deeper with that, but it's it's such a, a wonderful um, turn to make when you mm -hmm. can go from having to think, I've got to translate this every time I look at it, to actually just trying to process it in that language. And those That's sorts right. of things help people do that oh, yeah. from the start. Definitely, right? yeah. definitely. I mean, even, even uh, uh, our daughter, Katie, uh, she's watched a number of the videos for both, and it was amazing to see just how quickly she picked up the languages. Now, kids learn 
uh, a little bit quicker than than adults do, right? Um, right? But even still, uh, to see her knowledge and her ability to read Hebrew uh, is is amazing. So they're they're really effective videos, right? And that's probably without any homework or formal. That's right. Study yeah, just just, just kind of watching the videos. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. yeah. It's great. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are some great uh, great recommendations. I, I hope you will, will check into those if you haven't already. Mm -hmm. um, well, what about uh, some things on the horizon? We talked about some of the work you've done in the past, what you're doing now, some some things that you recommend that are currently available. Are, are there some resources that you say this is on the way or this looks like this is going to be a good thing in development that mm. you would want to just mention? Well, uh, maybe a few things come to mind. I mean, I'm, I'm really excited. We were talking before about the interest in discourse analysis, and it's been great to see uh, a lot of resources come out there. And I think Dallas International University is going to continue to do conferences as they can. So that's great. I'm also excited to see podcasts like uh, my wife's and yours. And SLA Insights with yeah, Jennifer Noonan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To see... Um, to see people being interested in how can we learn the biblical languages and what's the best way to do that, what's the best way to teach them. I've been really excited by those kinds of developments, and, and I just anticipate, you know, uh, Jen and, and you and, and various others continuing to put out lots of good material there. Uh, so I'm excited about that. On a very different note, another, another project I've been involved in, I'm part of a, uh, a research group called Exploring the Composition of the Pentateuch, and uh, we have a resource which is going to be coming out uh, at least within a few years. Uh, it's going to be a textbook called Rethinking the Composition of the Pentateuch. Okay. A uh, textbook that will be for uh, upper-level undergrads as well as, uh, you know, grad students. But just looking at the composition of the Pentateuch, uh, trying to look at, uh, for one thing, what does the Pentateuch itself say about its own composition? but try to take into consideration literary analysis, genre analysis. How did writing work in the ancient world? Also linguistics, uh, which we've, we've been talking about. I'm really excited about this project. It's um, going to be helpful to have a resource out there which will put forth a constructive model for the Pentateuch and its composition that's not just uh, perpetuating the uh, source-critical status quo that we seem to have. Right. And that, that seems to be something that at least some generations of biblical scholars just took for granted. They said, mm -hmm. this has been established by these scholars, you know, solidified in the late 19th century and proceeding as if it's some sort of settled science that they then mm -hmm. learned from. Is that, is that yep. fair? Yeah, yeah. yeah and but, even for some people still today. Yes. But I think there's a growing dissatisfaction that that, that kind of model, that approach just doesn't quite work and it. And again, it, it doesn't work with the way that ancient Near Eastern literature works based on our, our study of that. And we're imposing something foreign on it. Right. Uh, we need to take what the Bible says seriously, but again, also what uh, the way that ancient Near Eastern literature works. Right. And it's not, we can't assume that Greco Roman uh, concerns or certainly modern Western <laughs> English composition mm -hmm. rules and things like that apply in those cultures. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And we uh, fundamentally uh, will misunderstand them. <laughs> exactly. But you can't just knock down something. You're talking about not just showing this is inadequate, but saying here is a model that right. could explain better. Right. 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 And that's yeah. one of the advantages of this project because, again, typically it's been, well, we don't like what source criticism is doing because of this reason. You know, this this uh, presupposition or this right. argument that's being made is is not correct or not a good one. Well, I mean, that's, that's helpful, but then we also need to have a constructive model. Well, how should we think about it then if we're not doing it this particular right. way? Do some of these concerns also go back to what uh, your Dr. Fater said about, uh, was it that the text has to make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I exactly. Again, we, we have to read it as ancient or Eastern literature, uh, and it has to make sense. Uh, and if we don't think that, if, if we're not approaching it from that perspective, then we're going to miss things and we're not going to understand it the way it was meant to be understood. Excellent. Well, yeah. I look forward to, to seeing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And who, who, who did you say that was with? Uh, it should be with Hendrickson. Hendrickson. Yeah. Hendrickson. So hopefully your viewers can be watching for that in a few years. Okay, excellent. Well, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with you today, Ben. It's just been an absolute pleasure, and I hope we can do it again sometime. Yeah, thanks. That'd be great, Doug. Thank yeah. you so much for yeah. having yeah. me. This has been a lot of fun. You're welcome. As, as we close, uh, would you like to uh, speak to students uh, 
Hebrew teachers, researchers, any, any words of wisdom that you give to folks? Mm -hmm. You know, if you're first starting off in the biblical languages, one good thing to keep in mind is that it is so worth it to study them, both Hebrew and Greek, and do both languages if you can, if you have opportunity. Uh, but it's worth it. It's, it's a lot of work. But uh, the more you do it, the easier it will get. And the payoff is more than worth it. So please stick with it. And uh, try to heed some of the things that we've been talking about here, just even in terms of, you know, how, how should I study the languages? There's a lot of benefits to some of the resources that we mentioned there uh, and trying to, to learn in that particular way. But always remember that uh, you need to approach the languages as they were meant to be approached, and we want to try to avoid imposing foreign concepts on them. And the ways we can do that is by reading them as ancient or eastern languages and also trying to read them in light of insights from linguistics, and there's a lot that we can learn there. So try to pay attention to those things, too, as you can. Excellent. Well, thank you again for being with us today. Yeah, thank you so much, Doug. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Bye, Kashan.